Hello everybody. How are you guys doing today? I hope you are well. I hope you are blessed. I hope you are reading the word of our creator. My name is Jason and I am the proud gardener of the Yahoo and the Torah channel and this is Yah's channel and this is all about Yahoo and the Torah. We speak about everything from here, from the Bible, from the first to the end and books in between. And I believe everything from the front of the book to the end of the book is complete truth. And I believe the scriptures will speak for themselves in, in all accords. And today I'm excited because I'm going to actually throw in a couple different lessons. Um, this one is about commandment number six. And this was a commandment that my wife has said, this is not for us. And so we've had debate within our house. And I believe it is absolutely for us because I believe there will be a time when we are able to go back to the garden. I believe the garden that we were kicked out of is a, a, a paradise. It is a complete paradise. It is something that <clears throat> at the end of time will be restored. And when paradise is restored, I believe that this is a commandment that will be for this. And when we think about paradise, when we think about what the garden looked like, you know, we, we've all probably had ideas and thoughts and what it looks like, what it can be, what it is supposed to be. And it's a place of holiness, right? It was a place where there was not sin. Sin was not here. We did not have a, uh, we did not have uh, the rules that we have now because we had not fallen. And so when we look at the garden and look at all the the cool stuff that was probably all together. And when you read the extracurricular books, it definitely says the animals were able to speak one tongue before Adam was kicked out of the garden. So you would have had all of these guys that were out there and birds and lions and the lion would have laid down with the lambs and, you know, it, it would have been all this, but they would have spoke, right? And so these things spoke. They would have talked to Adam. Adam, hello. I don't know what you want me to be called, but uh, I am here for the naming. And that was one thing that uh, our creator allowed humans to do is to name all of these awesome creations that our, our creator has, has given to us. And let's, <clears throat> before I get into this, I, I want to touch real quickly upon creation. And then when we look at all of this stuff and that we are able to see that our creator has built a perfected ecosystem, a complete natural ecosystem that supports itself. It rejuvenates itself. And, um, you know, it is, it is what we are, what he gave us, right? He gave us a, a terranium, a, a geranium, a terranium, whatever you want to call it, of perfection, right? And nowadays, we don't even get to see the sun anymore because man has, has blotted that out. We rarely get to see it. And man has said we have a set of rules and man has said we need to alter our system, right? And this is all contrary to the, to the word of our, our creator. And so commandment six is going to be something, obviously, it's not going to be for right now, but it will be at some point. And the thing is, we all know this commandment now. We all know right from wrong because of the curse. We all know when we're naked. We all know when we're when we're. You know, when we're uh, judged, I mean, we, we have a set of rules now and we, we it's just gone for so many years. I think it's like 238 um, generations since Adam is somewhere around there. So we have his curse and we have the curse of man and we have a curse of woman. Now, let's get into this and see exactly why and let's see what commandment six is. And the very first thing that I want to talk about here is is this right here. Um, where did we get to how we got to what we got to? Right. Verse nine of Genesis two and out of the ground made Yahuwah Elohim to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge and good of good and evil. So right here, I want to we want to talk real quickly about this is there are two trees. There are true special trees in this garden. And, and why do I call it a special tree? Because these trees we have rules for. Number one, the tree of life, we don't understand what the tree of life is about at this moment in Genesis 2.9. But we understand that we are, uh, that he created two, two separate trees. And where we have, uh, where we have failed in, in a lot of this, and this is, this is commandment number six right here, right? This is commandment number six. We've had 
commandment one, two, three, four, and five that were in, in Genesis, the very first one. And now we have a be fruitful and multiply was the first one, right? First two, um, replenish the earth is number three. Um, four is, you know, basically four and five are subdue the animals, the reptiles, the the beasts and everything. They're ours to subdue. Excuse me. So what we have here is we have a... Um, Let's just read it, Genesis 2, 16. And Yahuwah Elohim commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. For in the day that you, sh you eat thereof, you shall surely die. Now, this is commandment number six. And again, this is where I have a little dispute with my wife. And, you know, I, I, we ask as a family, a lot of everything we do here is a family. And so we talk about it. And this would probably be a command when we were back to holiness. I don't know as when we will be restored to the garden or what that will even look like. But if we are back in the garden, we have been allowed in the garden, then the thing we shouldn't do is we shouldn't eat of this tree. Why? What happens? Well, this is where the curse of everything that we have happens. And I'm going to take you into Genesis 3 real quick. And this is this, this is a separate lesson. And so in Genesis 3, this is a commandment number 6 plus an extracurricular lesson. I hope that you guys can get something from. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahuwah Elohim had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has Elohim said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So we have right here, the, this, this, is, this is the beginning of the end, right? This is the beginning of a huge curse on women and a, and a curse on man. I would have to... to say, I believe the curse of the women is far worse than the curse of the man. And we'll get into that. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. For Elohim knows that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as Elohim, knowing good and evil, right? This is not the same as Elohim. This is not the same as, um, he's not saying you're going to be the same as God. He's going to be saying you're, you're as a, a powerful creature, right? There are many Elohims, lowercase Elohims, and the angels are called Elohims. Um, there's only one high, our, our commander Elohim, right? The capital, the Elohim, Yahuwah Elohim, right? There's only one for us, but there's lots of Elohims, just like right when you, there's lots of gods, lowercase g's, because there's, there's thousands and thousands of gods. Verse six, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her man with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made ap themselves aprons. And, and they heard the voice of Yahuwah Elohim walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his woman hid themselves from the presence of Yahuwah Elohim amongst the trees of the garden. And Yahuwah Elohim called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are you? And he said, I heard, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree whereof I commanded you that you should not eat? And the man said, The woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And Yahuwah Elohim said unto the woman, What? Is this that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And Yahuwah Elohim said unto the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon your belly shall you go, and dust shall you eat all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed, and it shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Verse 16. This is the curse. The curse of a, of a woman, being a woman. And all I can give you is a man's perspective upon viewing a lifetime with my wife of the curse, right? The monthly cycle curse. Some women have nothing that happens to them. Some women get ravaged, right? And I do not believe that creation for us had to be this hard, but I believe that we are cursed and women 
as you cycle, as you do your cycles and as you guys get ravaged, this is the curse right here. Genesis 3.16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conceptions. Two separate things here, guys. In sorrow you shall bring forth children, and your desire shall be to your man, and he shall rule over you. So there's a lot of stuff right here, right? And right out of the gate, he's he's going to multiply your sorrow, right? And pre-cycle is obviously a, a, a terrible place to be. And as a man, I am not so sure that a man is going to be able to deal with a cycle like a woman is going to be able to deal with a cycle. Yes, you've had it all your life. You figured it out, and that's the way it is. But men are totally different. And when we, <laughs> I'm not so sure days of cramps and days of fatigue and headaches and things of that nature, I don't think men are going to ad adjust to this real well, right? And there's a temperament that a woman would have that is able to deal with this far better than a man. And I'm, I'm only saying this from a man's perspective. So if I'm wrong, women, I'm super sorry. But I do believe, and from my perspective, it does look like women have been cursed far more than a man. Let's get into the curse of the man. Verse 17. And unto Adam he said, Because you have hearkened unto the voice of your woman, and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In sorrow you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Verse 18. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to you, and you shall eat of the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face shall you eat bread. Till you return unto the ground, for out of it were you taken, for dust you are, and unto dust you shall return. Now, as a man, I can completely tell you about this because what we do is we are farmers. I grew up on a farm. We had farm. That's that's what I understood as a child was how to farm. Um, I stepped out of that and I got into the technical realm. I started doing stuff. I actually worked for Google for years. Um, and now we run 153news.net. So I've always been technical, but now. In the latter days of my ending here, we are back to farming. We're back to corn and tomatoes and peppers and things of that nature. And I will tell you, every single day of, of our lives with my family and I, we rise up, we listen to the Torah, we get our garb on, and we go out to the field and we start crushing fields. And there are thorns, there are thistles, and I believe this could have been much easier as well. I don't believe we would be just inundated with the stuff we are inundated with now, but is a blister or two or having to work in the sun and things of that nature of day in and day out is that the same as a woman's curse i don't believe so men are built bigger stronger tougher and they are meant for this kind of rugged labor right but the all <laughs> the onslaught of of the woman's cycle i don't believe men would deal with correctly and that's the way it is. Our creator has designed this in such a miraculous way that when we are told to be fruitful and multiply we cycle in every single month, right? We should be having kids all our lives based upon the cycle of what we could have kids, right? And so when, as we, you know, tie the tubes and do whatever it is that we stop the children from coming, we are breaking commandments by doing that because we are supposed to bring forth children as long as we are able, be fruitful and multiply. So um, one last thing I want to touch upon, verse 20, <clears throat> and Adam called his woman's name Kawa, right? Everyone's like, it's, uh, it's Eve. No, it's, it's Kawa. Right, life giver Kawa, the first woman. There's no such Eve. That's a that's a King James thing as well. Uh, verse twenty one. And unto Adam also and to his women did Yahuwah uh, Elohim make coats of skins and clothe them. And this is where I want to to finish this up at, because <clears throat> when there were two kinds of trees in this garden, we have the tree of life, and we also have the tree of good and not, uh, and evil. Right, So we had two different knees, trees, and Adam and Eve had been eating off the tree of life. And this is one of the reasons that he had to be expelled from the garden, because if he was able to get back to the tree of life, right, he, he would undo the curse that Yahuwah had cursed him with. And so that couldn't be. Verse 22, And Yahuwah Elohim said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever, right? He wasn't going to live forever. We were meant to live forever until we fell, until we fell from the grace of our creator by violating his laws, statutes, and commands, right? And there is a, a reason that we are told to understand, to know, and to keep the law, statutes, and commands with us at all times. It's so that we can be 
fruitful so we can be strong, right? You're not going to be fruitful if you do not know the laws, statutes, and commands of your creator because you will go in a way that is contrary to the Bible and your fruits may be from evil, great evil, right? And so that if, you, if you're having anything to do with evil and making money, then the, your fruits are going to be bad. Even though you're making money and doing that, the fruits uh, according to our Elohim are going to be bad because we are walking contrary to the Torah. So it is why we should be telling the Torah to our, our family, to our kids, to our wives, why we should be, it's, it's just a way of life, right? This is, these are the best things in our world, the best things in my life. And it is a way back to our creator if I am willing to obey. And it goes the same for you. If you guys are willing to obey, our creator has a path. There's a kingdom to come. Mount Zion will, will be uh, have a kingdom that is put up on top of it, right? And we can be priests to our, our, our Messiah, right? That is where it is, it's, it's going to go. But guys, we have a test before us. We have a test that I don't believe any one of us are going to make out of this lifetime. I don't believe any one of us. I believe the end is up on us. And unless you guys are emboldened by reading your scriptures, by reading the law, statutes, and commands, and, and aligning your life with the, the way of the laws of our creator, that is how you're able to seek his face. That is how you're able to seek the heart of our creator is by doing what he wants. He does not want a bunch of disobedient children. Just like us as parents, we frown upon disobedience and it... it it takes uh, something away, right? It, it's a respect thing. When your kids disobey you, there's a lack of respect. There's a lot of problems with that. That is the same when we kick these laws to the curb and we're not keeping them, right? We should be in these laws every single day of our life. And, you know, that will make your life better. It will make all of your endeavors better. And it will be make you strong because the end has come and we must all be strong. Much love, folks. I am out.